Fargo Busters. <laughs> it's the name of your podcast. <laughs> That'd be amazing if, your, if the podcast was called Bargo Busters. <laughs> We went to a president. I don't know why they keep inviting us. <laughs> anyway, doing for his shit. Idolfums. Games, video 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 games. It's October 28th, 2009. It's October 29th, 2009. And this is Idle Thumbs 49. And I'm Chris Remo. Well, how do I follow that? With your name. But anything I do, it's going to be Nick. You fucked it up again. Oh, well, you, now you did. You smoke too fast. You smoke too slow. You fucking talk too so loud. What, what's you your laughed. name? My name's Nick Brecken. And, and I, I fucked and it all this up. Is why <laughs> this is why Nick is And I'm Jake Rodkin. <laughs> all right. So, uh, we, earlier this week, recorded an interview with... Earlier this week? Yeah. Earlier this week, we were, you're right, you're right. <laughs> we recorded an interview with uh, Max Schaefer from Runic Games that just released Torchlight, the excellent action RPG for PC, and realized that maybe for the second to last episode of Idle Thumbs, we should actually have it be an episode of Idle Thumbs. Mm -hmm. So, as you guys probably know, we've already released that, and we decided to record another one, so... Jake wanted to say something, so... We're Jake, right. Yeah, Jake, it's like very important to say. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Oh, well, you better think of something soon. Oh, video it's games. Time for an hour and a vital thumbs. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> time for... Uh, I remember that. You're thumbs. the creator. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Video games. I honestly, the game I've been playing is Torchlight. Yeah, so me too. Yeah, you know, what are you going to do? We just, I mean, <laughs> you guys are going to be up to your ass in Idle Thumbs talking yeah. about Torchlight. But we didn't <laughs> offer, like... <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> are going to be up to your ass in Idle Thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That wasn't ideal, but... And Torchlights. You know, yeah, Torchlights. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. I've mainly been playing that. Yeah. Um, we were probably embarrassingly... Well, me, I guess I mainly was probably... Uh, Sort of embarrassingly positive on the game during our interview, but I, you know, what can you yeah. seem to be liking it though from really, everything you've really been saying like about it. it. I, yeah, you, know. you guys kept posting. You posted those conversation that conversation between you guys up on the. Yeah, uh, yeah. that was mainly self-deprecating, but but yeah, I know. But you right. can tell from that conversation that you guys were both uh, enjoying the game. Yeah, yeah, you were winning the game. Yep, yep. I'm pretty close to getting the end. I think Nick and I are actually pretty much in the same space. Roughly, you're probably a little bit ahead of me at this point, yeah. but uh, yeah. Yeah, we were on the same. We were on the exact same uh, level when we were talking right two days ago at four a.m. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, no, it's a really good game. Um, yep. <laughs> nice. Thought you were going somewhere with some of that. Nope. Nope. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, well, no, I mean, I, <clears throat> oh god, we're, we're we're what should we talk about with Torchlight that we that we didn't cover? Uh, I well, guess like, just impressions. I guess what you guys think, I, like, well, I, yeah, I, as as everyone listening at home probably noticed, <laughs> said maybe three words during that uh, during that interview because I haven't played more right. than about forty minutes of a Diablo game ever in my life because I'm video games Rodkin, <laughs> um, so I didn't have a whole lot to say, but. I know the basics of Diablo. I've watched a million people play enough of it, but I don't actually know a whole lot about Torchlight other than you guys asked me to play it and I didn't mm -hmm. have time to. You guys, I mean, is there is that worth talking about or is it is it been the basics has it been has it been tread to death about Torchlight is from the Diablo guys. It's it's a similar game stylistically, but why would I want to play it if I already am still playing Diablo games or if I've never played Diablo? Either of those two. Yeah, I mean, well, I think it's it's a fair question because I mean, you guys play the shit out of Diablo, and also, obviously, you guys yeah. play well, you, mean, you guys play a lot of these sort of Diablo alikes that come along, but you seem to I've be seen, actually super into this one. Yeah, well, the sentiment uh, to some degree is why should I buy Torchlight beef? I already own Diablo two. It doesn't have multiplayer and. Um, you know, it seems like just kind of a bare... I mean, there's only three classes and et cetera, et cetera. But I think that, I mean, it is... It does have a... There is a different tone to it. Yeah. Um, there are improvements to it on a mechanic. feel to it. It has a different feel to it. Yeah. It's in 3D. Uh, 
and, and yeah, it, it like just. It, I mean, just by its nature, being a single player game, there is a different flow to the combat and you do get in sort of a different groove than uh, than than if you were just playing Diablo 2. It with a bunch feels of like, the, like it's like the uh, gaming equivalent of the solo album from some of the guys who. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't this know. Is, yeah. They'll, they'll, this it'll never be as big as there as the stuff right. when the band was. Together, right. But it but might be doing yeah. different or interesting things that they couldn't right. have gotten away with in, yes. in main Diablo. Yep. Yeah. It's that's that is the case, I think. And I have to say, I guess if I was going to give someone a reason to play, well, I guess I, I guess it's harder for me to address the people who've never played Diablo because I've known Diablo your life for so is long. Diablo? Yeah, but You've but known to it. someone who has played Diablo, I would what I would say about Torchlight is that it feels like a game that I can play like I could Diablo. I mean, it's so playable, it's so tuned. Um, there's some balance issues I think it has that are flaws that I we'll, we can talk about. Yeah, but the the actual underlying mechanics of the game are so strong that I don't actually on a moment to moment basis really care about the balance issues. Um, and that's what matters more. I mean, Diablo so, two was you know, pretty unbalanced clicking on and, things and killing dudes and, and looting a thing. Right. But yeah. The, the it's ability all, uh, to like fluidly yeah. react to situations, switch between your skills instantly. Like when you've got all your right. pet, sending my pet to go pick up other stuff while I'm going somewhere else. I mean, all that every, it's the kind of game where this is what I love about PC games when PC games are good, right? When they're native to the PC, when they feel like you're, you're doing it, you've got your fingers on the keyboard, your fingers are where you want them to be. Um, I feel like they could do more with this game in terms of user binding. That's always something I wish there was more of. But um, but for the most part, you're playing this game. You've got your hotkeys in there, and it's just the, it feels so playable. It's so together. I think this it's may, such a complete. You know what I would like to see is is this blowing the minds of a lot of World of Warcraft players who wouldn't who haven't played an action RPG, who haven't played Diablo. Yeah. Because it does, it's just, you know, just stylistically, it is closer to World of Warcraft than than it yeah. is than it is Diablo. Um, and mean, it, like it, aesthetically, yeah, aesthetically and uh, visually, and it, it 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 does it does actually borrow some things from World of Warcraft. I mean, it, you know, I mean, skill bars a little closer to it. Yeah, yeah, skill bars, item comparisons, and things like that. Yeah. You know, just uh, on a basic level. Well, they had that in Diablo. Uh, yeah, I get, please, Nick. Did they? Item comparisons were in Diablo. Too. Okay. Yeah. Well. Anyway, there are some other systems like that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but but the big difference. But the big difference is 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 just the immediacy of playing exactly. an action RPG. That right. that it is an action RPG. Whereas one click and, per action. Right. Yeah. You're killing a lot of guys, and it's all it it, feel, it all feels really satisfying, and uh, and uh, you know you can quit whenever you want to and not disappoint forty raid members. I mean, it's just it. it yeah. It, it is completely different <laughs> until the MMO version comes out. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But one thing I want to go further, in addition to just, I mean, you're killing lots of guys, sure, but on the moment to moment basis, to me, what makes this so different? I mean, it doesn't just fly as far as this is Diablo as anything. For someone who hasn't played a game like that, but has played World of Warcraft, to me, the biggest difference, like when you get in there on the granular, granular, ugh, granular level, granular? is that when you click one time, that's one action. And these games are often disparaged for having you click a million times as a result of that. But that's what that's what but makes them work. I every mean, click not, is an actual thing in the world. And exactly, just, it's not like you don't just lock yourself into the combat mode, right? Where you're mm. you're in World of Warcraft, well, you can just hit the the combat button once, and then your guy goes on his little timer. I mean, well, yeah, it's, you you can hold down the button and do this in and just have the the attack repeat in an action RPG like Torchlight. But everything you're doing is is based on it well, does. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just it does it does actually. I mean, it's. Yeah, to, to to a large extent, that's that's true. But it also does borrow that that World of Warcraft taskbar. There are spells that have cooldowns. But what, what I did want to say though is, is that, uh, which is something that Max actually mentioned. But um, it, it being a single player game, and you're not dealing with that, you know, MMO lag. Like I mean, even even oh, right. there are spells in World of Warcraft that are immediate, that have immediate effects. But in that setting, they often feel uh, just sloppy and, and kind of unsatisfying you, I mean, it's you just, feel what seems like a modem yeah like, basically yeah yeah the network exists yeah, yeah yeah so what we're apparently doing is specifically selling torchlight to world of warcraft <laughs> yeah, i don't know <laughs> well we, it is we've a good determined game. that this is a like a it is it is actually i mean I, I think if i was playing world of warcraft it is a good game like a side game yeah. to you know companion right. game and for, it even looks that. fairly similar in terms of yeah. color palette and yeah, yeah. and so forth yeah I, I really like how this yeah. game looks. Mm -hmm. that, it, it would not be a good sequel to Diablo visually, but it's a good yeah. own separate game. Yeah. What were you saying, all, Jake? Oh, just all. I can't remember now, but just all of the conversations that we've had about this game and the interview that we did uh, earlier have made me realize finally that I should probably play one of these at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a good one to get into because it doesn't. It's not like Diablo where you've got to invest yourself in this like 
history of well, uh, not like history well, in terms of lore, but you know, as soon as you, this especially is a, in a this multiplayer is a new, environment, a new streamlined right, game made by right. the exact same people well, as the old one. So I don't need to. You don't yeah, need to I, go on there and have a there's, dude. There's like, no need to dive into what is coming up on like 20 years of. Yeah. Uh, well, mm-hmm. 10 years. 15, oh, I guess it's 10, 12, 10 or. When was Diablo 90, 97, one? I guess. Diablo 1 was 97. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought it was more like 15 or 20. Nope. I guess not. I guess yeah. it was a, a, a high res VGA game. Yeah. Yes. Definite late nineties game. Yep. Yep. All right, fine. A decade of dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, but it, the, and you know, I, like I said on the on the in the interview, ideally this would be a multiplayer game, right? I mean, in a perfect world, you would have the option of playing this single player multiplayer. Well, it's but, it's not like they're they're not aware of that though. Since they're, sure. Since yeah. The next their next skew is is yeah. a multiplayer. But I'm just I mean speaking to people who because I've seen a lot of people say basically no multiplayer, no buy, and I just I, I don't. All I right, think okay. you'd you'd be you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not at least try this and see if you actually maybe like it more than you thought you would single player because I went um I you know a full 7 or 8 years I mean probably 8 years playing Diablo 2 mm-hmm. um I I play I have played that game so much I mean it's 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 disgusting over over the years how many hours I put into Diablo 2 and I, and I never once made a non battle my character, not a single time, ever. Never click that button. And I, I'm really enjoying Torchlight. Like it doesn't yeah. matter, you know. I mean, it's it's a really fun single player game. It it's it just seems silly to me to to not be willing to accept that you can play a single player game and have fun just because you've played another game in this genre mm-hmm. that is primarily <clears throat> multiplayer. I I just I think they've done a great job. I I think they've made this game. They've they've succeeded where they need to, which is on as Nick as you said the immediacy, on the, the just the feel on the overall world coherency is great. Uh, it allows you to play with a fluency that is something I love about games like this. I mean, I love feeling this in control with my character. Yeah, that I'm constantly managing things. I'm constantly moving around. I'm I'm constantly <clears throat> thinking about where I'm positioned relative to the enemies. I'm you play it on an easier difficulty and you you can stand there and shoot the guys. I mean it's. This is what this genre does well. It's it's so good at, at scaling itself to how you want to play it. Mm-hmm. Well, what I like about this game is that it does get back to that Diablo thing where you're moving down yeah, and down and sure. down, and then that's that's it. You know, yeah. what I mean, like, uh, it, it, I kind of hope that with the MMO, they I mean, at least some of that in there. It, yeah, that there's that there, well, I mean, I, I hope that it's not uh, as as literal of an MMO as as. Uh, as you might imagine I, yeah. that the overworld is kind of kept to uh some kind of sane minimum of of uh exploration i don't know i feel like the strength of these games is not that you know is not is right. not you want to go into a dungeon yeah, yeah i want to be yeah. in a dungeon i mean as most much of as... the time it sh- i should be in a dungeon and uh and then the rest of the time i'm in a town yeah uh and... i mean obviously the big difference between diablo 1 and 2 is that in diablo 2 you go to different cities but all it's really doing is shifting what it looks like I right mean, you're still starting in the hub and then yep. branching off into a dungeon immediately yeah although the descending is and is sort of a unique the never-ending descent is 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 still mm-hmm. kind of a unique thing that has not been done very often. Yeah, I mean, if you think of like the Act Two and Diablo Two, if that was an area, that desert, if that was an area between that town and another town, yeah, I I, I don't know if that would be as satisfying to fight in. Yeah, well, that was also, uh, you know, I mean, it's funny for such a great for how amazingly lasting of a game Diablo Two is. Some of that content was awful. You know, it's, it's Diablo 2's... I, no, it, it's really... I think about this a lot mm. um, because I never don't have fun when I'm playing. As much as, like, you can yeah. complain about stuff in Diablo 2, I never don't have fun when I'm doing it. But Act 2 and Act 3, I don't have very many fond memories of. I mean, for me, the... the but it's bullshit, really, because when I was playing them, I was still having the goddamn time of my life. Yeah. But I just mean, in terms of, like, on a relative basis... You know, it's it's less interesting. I they are the least in- interesting acts yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But I mean, you know, again, when I, it's a million caveats there because mm-hmm. I still played through them a thousand times and fucking never. Got I guess what I'm afraid of with the MMO is is if you imagine like any of those acts and you're you're going through these large you know open areas. I mean, that's I mean the acts in Diablo two uh, where you're in open land you know sections is probably. Yeah the closest thing to an MMO overworld uh, that you've seen in these games to date. And I, I don't know if there were like 30 people running to kill the same like <laughs> right. guy that I just was, yeah. you know, I don't, eh. 
that, that that to me is a little scary. What I would prefer is just a town with uh, several instance dungeons, and I can group want, up so and Guild Wars kind of thing. I want a Guild Wars. Kind you of want thing, vehicles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Record scratch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to travel to a different planet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! Yeah, fly an X wing. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Um, Sweet torchlight yeah. MMO ignition T minus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's cool that they're doing that though. I I hope it's fun. Yeah, I you know I it's hard to know because I mean even by his own admission they haven't they haven't done much yeah. actual production work on it. They've kind of done some design, but they're they have you know the game's basically starting now. So who knows? I yep. mean they say they want it out in eighteen months, which seems insane. But they made this entire thing. Start right. to finish in eleven months. Yeah. So they've got their core tech. They've got sort of assets to build from. They've got si- gameplay systems. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe they can do it. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being more like twenty four, thirty six months. But right. Maybe not thirty six, but thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm curious. I don't know. Uh, for now, Torchlight's awesome. I, ca- yes. I can't wait to to play. Uh, well, I'm going to probably probably play through the game several times. I I'm really excited to do a hardcore character. I've never <laughs> I've never done a hardcore character. Right, we were Diablo. talking about this. Yeah. Actually, I think I have. I there's no way I never did that for like but 5 I, minutes. Well, I mean, I did it probably for a few <laughs> levels and then just kind of whatever. Right. I just want to get on battle with my yeah. friends. But I I always felt like I sort of just <laughs> It's funny how focused my Diablo experience. It's like I played for so goddamn long. Yep. It was all like the same thing. I pretty much played the same build. That character. Hey, a meteor <laughs> sorceress. Yes. Oh, really? All right. I uh, I did, did the same uh, build every time. I would say about fifty percent of my builds were the sorceress. Yeah. And then the other ones were kind of spread out amongst different things. But the sorceress was was the was my main class. Yep. Yeah. And and actually that leads. You guys are so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And we're both playing the alchemist and torchlight. I know that was kind of sad. The the mod component of this game is yeah. cool. I hope that this game achieves enough of a critical mass that at least a couple sort of notable projects come out of it that are well, I yeah. Mean, I mean, you can create your own spells. Conceivably, somebody could create an you can entire... create your own particle effect. You yeah, you can create, create your own. own... Right. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying if somebody could create the sorceress class. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, basically, right, what I, I mean, th- yeah, it's just in this com- in in a community like this, though, you're going to end up with a bunch of sort of weird stuff willy nilly. Yeah, right. But I I hope that it catches on enough that a few good, a, <laughs> actual good things a few, come a out. few yeah. solid projects yeah. at, at any scale yeah. congeal yeah. enough that, that yeah. there are a couple I see like like mean, if yeah. if someone said we're going to band together and we as a collective group are going to make four additional classes and that team does a solid enough job that that sort of like becomes a de facto ex- like, like de facto x pack yeah. yeah and That'd i mean, be awesome. that, that's the sort of project that i could see a mod kit like they're developing working yeah. really well and yeah. when you look at what people have done for like the total war series for example oh, yeah. where people take you know use mods to just make incredible things yep. i mean entire new campaigns or entire like entire historical units and things like y- that yeah, yeah. And, and and sort of going in there and sort of fixing all of the historical fudging that the creative assembly did for gameplay terms you know these guys will go in and just make it a, a, a whatever it needs to be to be as accurate as possible for the dude to actually mm-hmm. care about that stuff like that's awesome well, yeah, like, that's, this this game the fact that they're putting out what sounds like a really robust uh, it's like, their full editor I've used it actually yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's amazing yeah it's nice. it makes me hope that, that that type of audience is attracted to this game because yeah. it would be it sounds like it'd be a good match and I mean obviously it seems like from a development standpoint it's what they're hoping for I mean basically what I want they're, they're I mean people think of other stuff but the things I'm hoping come out and I suspect will are one like crazy nightmare hardcore dungeon you know what i mean those of course will exist that's the first thing some guy's gonna make exactly uses the base kind of underlying classes doesn't doesn't invent a new game but then it's just but you think you're good (laughs) yeah exactly i love that shit did i if i've already talked if i've already talked about this in a past cast then tell me to stop but did i ever talk about the calculator mario games I think the you might have talked about Mario that in like, like episode three. Super, yeah, yeah, like super hardcore user maps. Yeah, um, I loved that shit where you get so good at a given game that just someone has to invent like insane horror houses of just. I mean, there are those for actual Mario games now mm-hmm. where you see oh, those right. like no, I know the Mario but, one and yes, three yeah. and Mario World just like yeah. Yeah. just like rape dungeons basically. It was yeah. Mario. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. Yeah. Every block is invisible or whatever, right. but. And so, especially now that uh, sort of YouTube and and video capture, like I guess, kind of culture exists in in games. Yeah, that sort of 
the notoriety of that sort of crazy thing uh, can rise up in a way that it never could before. Of right. Just like yeah. where you play that level for yourself and just get destroyed even after beating your head against the wall for like three <laughs> right. hours. And then yeah. you watch a video on YouTube, which is like, oh my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, fine. You are good at a game. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It kills. It's funny. I played all that old Mario stuff before. Like YouTube, obviously, far long right. before YouTube was around or anything. Huh. And it's, well, I just, you know, obviously, but it's, it's, it was, it's crazy to think about that now. And the fact that I was literally doing that purely, I mean, it sounds stupid, but purely just because I want, I just wanted a Mario game that would fucking kick my ass and like that I would eventually persevere through. And it's, I don't, it's funny because I don't play games for that reason at all these days anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was weird. Like I, it's an experience that I, I really only had for a very short window uh, in my life, but it was really interesting. That window like when was, you were in trigonometry. It, yeah, it was, that was it. It was when I was in, it was when I was in math class. Um, but yeah, so I, that would be cool. And then, you know, I, I, I just want to see someone make a whole new game. I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to see someone make the sort of uh, like, just something totally different than what Torchlight is. I mean, I, it's, it, it really is an extremely robust editor. It's, um, like I mentioned on the interview, um, anyone who's used Unreal Engine 3, it's got a system similar to the visual scripting system uh, called Kismet in Unreal Engine 3. It's not, I mean, it's not obviously as like polished and crazy as that because it's not made by a company making a professional engine for commercial use, but, well, they're commercial use, but yeah, but it's great. I mean, it's very intuitive. It's got all the stuff they use to make the game. Like you can get all your logic in there. Um, you can replace any asset you want. Um, people could make a whole new game with this one that's really cool. Or they'll probably just remake Diablo. Well, that'd be cool too. <laughs> that I would guess. be cool but, too. But I, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like this. One of the reasons I'm particularly optimistic about the mod scene for this game is because I don't think there has been another editor like this for a game like this. Mm, Certainly not nothing this extensive. Aware. Nothing no. where you're, the developers are just giving you their own in right, full it, editing it, suite. It, just, it needs the combination I, of the player base and the right. interested authors. Well, but I just, yeah. By that I mean guys who are accustomed to making custom content and making mods, I'm wondering if some of them will become interested just because it's just sort because of a there's new thing. A, such like, a, a readily available large SDK, yeah, basically. That, that isn't yeah. just another first-person shooter editor. <laughs> you know, like guys who, who like making mod content, custom content, and this is something that it isn't just Crytek or Unreal or, or id Tech or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's just top-down totally stuff. Separate thing. It's hard to think of a lot of examples of that. Like, yeah, I, I think, think there, there, were some, there were some like Fallout add-on things that people tried to hack oh, together, really? but I don't, I don't think any think of them are very good because there just weren't any tools. Yeah, but well, th- this is nice. Now because, there's tools. Yes, we have the tools, the soft tools. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's I don't know. It's cool. I hope this game is successful. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I I definitely might have played it. You know, for people life. who for people who don't know anything about Diablo or this game. Why you should play this is that it is a game that doesn't hit you in the face with story or any of that other bullshit. <laughs> right. It's just yeah. a fucking game. Yeah. You play it and you know you're clicking <laughs> and you go through things and there are monsters and you get loot and stuff and and that's it. There's no fucking like if uh, if, if the fact that Chris and Nick have combined dedicated basically an hour and a half of our week to talking about this game on record <laughs> is, not, is not enough. Um, yeah. Uh, baboo. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep, this game, uh, it's actually, it's funny, this game interrupted my uh, Demon Souls. Uh, also, also a great game. Interrupted, I mean, it interrupted your Demon Souls? <laughs> it interrupted my Demon Exercise Souls. my Demon Souls. Yeah. Um, which is also a fantastic game. But it's funny because they, they You've share... You've just been slicing dudes in dungeons I know, for a while. exactly, <laughs> yeah, right. They're both, they appeal to similar parts of the brain, but it's hilarious how different they are. And like, in every way, while still being sort of the same point to the game. Right. They're both basically Diablo clones. <laughs> but one of them will, will just... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. The funny thing about Demon's Souls is my initial impression of it was like if someone had invented Diablo without ever playing Diablo. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, not trying to make an accessible game or anything, you know? Like, it's not. I mean, that's... It's yeah. like, it's proud of how inaccessible yep. it is and it's what makes the game good, but it's also what makes the game infuriating before mm. you understand what makes it good. Yeah. Um, Torchlight's not like that at all. No. I mean, you'd fucking get in there and you, you're going... It gets hard. I mean, yeah. you know, there are times when you'll when you'll die more, but... It, and I... And it feels actually a little easier than Diablo to me, but um, maybe that's just because I'm used to playing this kind of game. I'm going to 
I'm gonna make. I'm doing on the harder difficulty, the hardest yeah. one next. But um, the other thing, though, uh, just real quick. Yeah. Uh, for people who have played Diablo, I, there are some cool dishes like the dog. Oh, really yeah, cool. it's great. The dog is really cool. You can give him spells and he'll pick up my, stuff. My dog and... can raise zombies and catch Yeah, fireballs. yeah, exactly. And, uh... Fuck you, Peter Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> this dog taught me how to love. Yeah. And you can learn spells like Diablo 1, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there are little things in there like that that are just uh, nice. You can enchant stuff all the time. I mean, there's just, you know. Yeah, they basically took yes. every single Yeah, they like, just threw it all together and it's just there. From and, Diablo. Yeah. And they're just like, get it all in there. Yeah. Like there's maximum charcy, basically. Right, exactly. Like, like there's enchantment, there's gems. Jake has no idea. Uh, there's I don't know like what's going the, on. <laughs> there's the um like uh what do you call it when you combine the items? Uh uh, uh yeah, whatever. Whatever they call it. Transmute. Um, transmute exactly, transmute. Yes. Um there's just like all that crap that was in Diablo. Yep. The only exception being runes, I guess, aren't in there. Right. Pretty much all those other systems, they just threw them all in, and it's it's pretty fun. It's it just it it is like the most extreme loot game I've played in a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is you're just, all you're just about looting that. all over the place. Yeah, any any but even more so than Diablo. I mean, this game is so so based around loot. Yeah, um, but it does it really well. It it's it knows how to do it well, um, and I you know, it's got the stupid gems you can combine and level them up into better gems. Right. I enjoy that a lot, collecting the stupid <laughs> bullshit gems and leveling them up. I enjoy it way more than using the actual gems in my weapons to make them better, which is what they're supposed to be for. I just like collecting them. That's, I just love, I love trying to describe this game. Like, I, know. I was trying to describe what Diablo is. Like, just, you take these gems and you put them in a cube right. and then you hit the transmutation button yeah. and they're combined into a super <laughs> gem, which you is then placed as a, a socket in your into your... Cube. <laughs> this sounds way less awesome now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, yeah. yeah, people are canceling their pre-orders. Uh, not too late now. Bitches. There aren't any synergies yeah. in Torchlight. I don't know. It doesn't have runes, but I love collecting colored gems. Yeah. What are you talking yeah. about? But you know. But the, also, you said the, moments ago that you have a dog who can raise zombies. Right. And, right. The, and, and the reality yeah. is, so all I, of that. Yeah. The reality is, the way these games work means you don't have to do any of that shit if you don't want to. I mean, there's no. The only required system in this game ever is kill the guy you're supposed to kill. I mean, yeah. you know, the, what weapons you use to do that, or what spells, or anything. There's absolutely no mandatory. Right. Stuff going on at all. It's entirely just whatever you want to do. You don't have to be intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the complete other end of the spectrum, I've been playing uh, Uncharted 2. Until, oh, yeah. Which until it requires a lot of intelligence to... Uh... But, uh... Yeah, what are you thinking about that game? <laughs> um, It's not... I, I think I was correct in assuming <laughs> it's not my kind of game. Yeah. Um, it's an extremely... I wouldn't say it's my kind of game either, really, but yeah, yeah keep going. It, it's extremely well made. I mean, like, they... I there are times when I really am like just it, what, you get to some of these vistas and you look out and it, yeah. it really is breathtaking and that I will I, I will admit like I was completely taken by surprise in that respect I actually did not expect to be as impressed by by how gorgeous this game can be mm -hmm. um, I you know amazing job on that Naughty Dog it really is actually <laughs> goddamn phenomenal to me but. Oh no! Go Amazing ahead. job on that. Well, I think naughty dog. <laughs> <laughs> you naughty dog. What? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the naughty dog? Just like <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention it. <laughs> but you were gonna say something, Nick? Um. Well, I, I just when I think about this game, I don't know. This this isn't much of a spoiler. There, there's there's the the. Um... I just wish that they hadn't made that guy be dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the the scene the scene with the um the the crazy um Hindu statue. Do you oh, know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about? To me that room kind of sums up our Uncharted 2 for me, where I walk in and I'm like, Wow, this is an amazing looking room. Uh -huh. And oh great, there's no combat. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then what the hell am I supposed to do? And wait, I have to like climb up a thing and it doesn't really it's not really like clear what I'm supposed to do. I actually and... like that room. Really? Yeah. I had a lot of problems with it, and I talked to a lot of people who were also confused. I don't know. I, I, what I, what I guess what I mean to say well, is... Keep going, yeah. It just, there are there are a lot of moments in that game where I am, uh, you know, like you said, awestruck, um, but then there are a lot of holes in, in, the, in the game design where it's just, uh, this doesn't make any sense, or this is kind of weird and silly, you know? Yeah, but well, I agree with you completely, but I like that room, actually. It was the only time... At least as far as I've played through the game so far, um, it was one of the only times when I, I actually had to 
sort of stop. Look at a thing and examine something. something. No, I did like that because part of it. it was, I guess it, what I'm saying is the uh, just the the first like ladder or whatever you have to find in that room. Uh-huh. I couldn't find it at okay, all. Sure, fair enough. Uh, and that just happened to me a lot in that game. <laughs> That's where I just, the worst one that happens in a game. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean Th- that that did happen to me sometimes in that game, but that. In those cases, it bothers me because it's like there really is literally only one place to get where you're going, but you're outside in this huge area where it looks like, you know, you're in a city. I yeah. mean, you should be able to do all kinds of things. You should be yeah. able to interact with objects. You should be able to well, climb that's what on I mean. stuff. Yeah. And I, and He's you, a superhuman you at sometimes, but go, then in this yeah. room, I can only have the one thing that I have to find. And that's, but the thing that I frustration like, is kind of the, the, you know, the thing that yeah. keeps me from really no, loving this game. Same here. And I feel the exact same way. But I really liked that room because that was the one... Because <laughs> <laughs> no, because when you're outside... Terrible this, example, but... <laughs> well, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, no, I, I know. Just, Keep going. I'm going to explain. Keep going. So when you're outside, the reason I, I don't like that is because it feels... It doesn't make any sense. Mm. I'm like, well, I, I can see a million other ways I could go. Uh, I don't yeah, understand. When you're I in see. puzzle you're, room, it's yeah, okay. It's like, uh, okay. I would be totally confused. I don't know. Like, you're in this room. I mean, this game tries very hard to be sort of an Indiana Jones kind of thing. And in some ways, it succeeds. And, and when you're outside, I think that's when it doesn't succeed. Like, you shouldn't... I mean... But when you when you're when I'm in that room, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, God, that is the moment in Indiana Jones where he just kind of stops and he is baffled for a while, and mm-hmm. he tries something and it doesn't, and then he kind of looks around and suddenly he gets it. And there was a moment with that statue when I realized, oh my God, I see exactly what I'm trying to do. Of course, this is what I'm trying to do. Well, and then I and then I did it, and it was cool, and I felt yeah. like I actually had sort of solved this thing. I mean, the game I did like it does tell you like, look in your book. There's a thing here. No, but yeah. I I really liked that room. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, take I, that, Brecken. <laughs> well, no, but I understand what you. No, mean, no, no, right? no, no. It, I like. I loved those. What you're describing. It was just you know. Once I found, I knew exactly what I had to do. Right. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Like, like All right, that's I, fair enough. You know, well, it, you're just a shittier explorer. Yeah, I just yeah. <laughs> I'm a way say? better I'm, Indiana Jones yeah. than you are, mm. Nathan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, Nathan Drake. <laughs> his margin and his like right. middle school notebook. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, so I, my overall, the overall kind of thing that, that I just keeps me from really connecting with Uncharted 2 is it, it, the, the positive thing everyone says about it, right. Is that it's like, it's Oh like my God, movie. it's like a movie. And I, and I know there's going to be people who write in like, well, that's not what I like. Okay. I, I have seen that comment so many times yeah. that I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of people think. So I'll, that that is clearly what this game is going for to some extent. That is what a lot of people see in it. My problem with it is that it 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 so easily breaks the illusion all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, every single time you jump off the thing, that's exactly when it crumbles. Every single the whole first sequence is like that, and it's yeah, it's like well, I could hang on this thing forever, and you know, I. I mean, well, it's, they, it, it's they're choosing to do that, right? I mean, they don't have to do that. They they could mess with those timings. They could have it wait longer after you come off. They could it's uh, the roller coaster not ride. have everyone I break. Mean, it, they, it's it's the adventure game style of storytelling, but with all real time events, like your actual method of interaction. Right. It still is yeah, like yeah. it's like it's well, I was gonna say it's like the end of full throttle, but in that the car actually goes off a cliff if you wait long right. enough. But, <laughs> uh, it's that you know everyone's gonna sit around breathing until you make it look cool by doing right. the thing that you're supposed to do. It's just in this case, that's all sort of grappling mechanics. The, uh, but it, You're right. But the difference is usually in adventure games, that's it, it is implausible, right? You can wait forever in an adventure game. My problem is that I don't like it, even in adventure games, when it's done in a situation that you're supposed to believe. Right, where it's a life-threatening it's a situation, but then life-threatening, you, immediate you importance. go make dinner yeah. and you come back and everyone is still sort of in the fighter right. stance looking right. at each other. Yeah. And that, when adventure games do that, it does bother me. And in, and in this game, it does bother me. And I, I Yeah, no, that, yeah, I, I, I wasn't trying to say that it's good. It oh, actually, no, no. Like, but but the, some people have that problem with adventure games, too, and I yeah, think that's well, a fair like, criticism I mean, it's, as well. It was kind of a simple, kind of slightly, like face plunging solution but i really liked that in full throttle the car will just drive off a cliff if you don't solve right. that puzzle long enough until you want to commit suicide because the car is <laughs> right. driving off a cliff yeah and, but, and some people which is a, hate a fault those in that. too for yeah. other valid reasons um, it's a difficult dilemma i mean 
I don't. I don't know how much I want to spoil the, but the scene we were talking about. Um, oh, Nick and I were discussing this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, let, we can just say there's a scene where you're carrying a guy who's wounded. Right. I don't know. You got to this point, Jake. Right? I haven't yet. Okay. Well, anyway, I won't, I won't go into detail. But you're getting there. There are bullets coming at you from all over the place. Yeah. Are they just, um, just an environment loop of bullets? No, it's not. Well, it's, it's actual, it's actual people shooting okay, you. Well, that's good. But you're, you're getting shot like a thousand times in the face. And However, this guy has taken a single bullet. Hit right. That's that, been modeled. Now into that's his... been a big complaint about Uncharted, hasn't it? Of just Sort of probably the number of bullets that everyone can take is the sort problem of though is times well, until the, the story doesn't yeah. until the story doesn't right until, until narratively yeah. until a narrative bullet appears right the problem though is what, I'm, what I was thinking about though is my the first thing I thought of was well maybe they should have just done something where it is spawn bullets where you know there's just some effect where there are bullets flying but they're not really hitting you all the well, time like the maybe actual like, Indiana Jones ride right where you're supposed to believe the the yeah, arrows that but, are coming out of the walls right. are yeah. missing you yeah but the problem with that is that you would end well, up with the you, adventure you, game thing which is make, like you go make your jiffy pop or whatever, exactly you watch the screen right. yeah. Yeah. and you just watch you just watch yeah I mean that would be incredibly lame so how do you solve that to me that paradox indicates yeah. trying to recreate that experience maybe isn't what a game exactly right well yeah it is like when it works, it's really nice. Like, I mean, the very first puzzle when you're climbing up the box car, if that was all timing based, that would be the worst chain yeah, of jumping puzzles in the entire yeah. world. But the fact that it's not pulls you out of that situation and it, striking that balance is really yeah. tough. But I, I like that there's a game that is at least that is sort of trying to give you that like it. I, I can't think of a game that wouldn't basically just be the most killer frustrating like <laughs> right you, well dragon's I, lair is, is you but know, i mean the, like well i mean if there is you, which is you, garbage you scramble up this box car that is that is on its way falling off a cliff you would need to get the precision of like the super last levels of n plus of your ability to sort of jump and world manipulate and then people aren't gonna play your game mm -hmm. yeah I, i'm but, not i mean there there have been i i wish i wish that i wish that it wasn't that your guy would hang off of a pole forever but yeah. i also liked the fact that I at least could, in some capacity, participate in that experience. Yeah. But that it it's not as fulfilling as when that sort of situation is is real, though. Well, no, I mean, I you, that, or in real life when you wake up on a train car. <laughs> right. Well, no, what you say is completely valid, and I and I, I want to make it clear what I'm not trying to do is play backseat designer and say this is what they should have done. Mm -hmm. I'm not at all trying to do that. I'm purely speaking from the perspective of a player who's saying, regardless of whether they made the best choice or not, and they probably did make the best choice, and they did a great job at the choice well, they I mean, decided to go through. To make it, right. It. it just, for me personally, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it's not very effective. And I, I, I guess it just means maybe you can't please me when it comes to this kind of game, which well, yeah, it's, it's not really anyone's fault, I guess, but I just... There's I, so many different people trying to solve that problem. Like, yeah. I was just thinking of Brutal Legend in the beginning where you're driving on the highway and right. there's that solution was to have somebody go oh look out you know it's crumbling on the left side of the screen you right. know like sort of warn you ahead of time mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i don't know god i had something else i was gonna say too and i totally I mean, forgot no. yeah but i mean no i mean jake i like it's well like i mean valve has moments that are like right. what uncharted has but valve yeah. also keeps it really controlled they just have the benefit of it being a first person scenario so they don't have to worry about creating a situation where you're like physically like hand to object right, grappling right. your way on surfaces. They uh, fudge a lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, and Jake, I totally appreciate where you're coming from. And I'm, I mean, I'm oh. glad that there's like, I'm glad that there's someone on the podcast who doesn't feel the way I do. Cause otherwise well, it I mean, would be in, like in all honesty, douchebag central. But. In all honesty, I do prefer like if, if there is that sort of a, a style of game like this, where it is all about world exploration, I much more prefer being able to, find my own route or you know feel like there are really strong repercussions for my actions if i fuck up you but, know but like just i also maybe partly just because i make adventure games all the time i right. i like sitting down and just being like this is this is an extremely authored experience that is still interactive and they did an amazing job of it and that yeah. that is that i i found that really fun even though it it doesn't like fulfill you to the core the way that a really good super super high agency Right. Your like sort of choice driven version of that could no that's that's uh, fair enough it, I it, understand like what yeah, yeah it, what the it appeal is sparks yeah. a different brain part <laughs> well, yeah yeah <laughs> I I really like when you're just moving around the world that you just sort of the, the game does what I want it to be doing just sort of by me mushing things around and pressing a button <laughs> but I I do I do miss a little bit of the like Prince of Persia's Hands of Time 
the controls were like it was sort of the first game that I felt like was all about that style right. of sort of 3D yeah. uh, world climbing stuff. And because of that, it was a little bit crunchier. Uh, yeah, like it was a little bit suckier. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, a, it was slightly more of the original Prince of Persia. Like, oh crap, my jump is like slightly mistimed, right. and then the guy. But yeah. playing Uncharted, it was, it, this is the first game sort of in that style that I've played actually since Sands of Time. I didn't yeah. really play the Prince of Persia sequels or Assassin's Creed, and I only ever played like an hour of the Mirror's Edge DLC because I'm a douche apparently. Right. Um, but just the fact that it's so smooth, I did, I did feel like I was missing a little bit of the of you know, the sort of, yeah. of the detailed agency from Sands of Time where it's like I'm gonna go now you're gonna jump yeah. off and you're gonna grab that thing when I press the button a second time and uh, and this Drake's just like woohoo yeah, and yeah. then he's just he's already there and he's the Mario jump like he's already yeah. climbed up the, the next ledge like wait a minute oh, yeah. I was just pressing X over and over again but whenever I it's, have to swing from a bar in Uncharted 2 I pretty much just press the X and then I know that it will insert it for me yeah. I mean, yeah. Sands of Time is one of my favorite games of all time and the thing I, and it's of the it's time games. of the time yeah. and in a lot of ways it's as linear as uncharted 2 but the thing i like about it is that on the granular level it i keep saying this and fucking it up it really, i mean it really <laughs> demands the granular yeah. level <laughs> it, it is a little sort of crunchier as you say or like slop, sloppy or something yeah. but it does demand you excel well you know there's something to like, that it just it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't I was, fill um, in as many gaps and because right. of that it doesn't feel as smooth but it does also require you to bend to its will a little more and get a little more precise with what it specifically wants you to do. Whereas yeah. when sort of when Uncharted 2, uh, when it, when something fucks up and you miss a jumper when your guy can't uh, do a thing, I end up blaming the game. Whereas in Sands of Time, I would only blame the game when it was really egregious and I frequently ended right. up blaming myself for not being precise enough with what I was doing. Although in Sands of Time, I also said, fuck you, stupid piece of shit game. <laughs> Pretty yeah. often. Uh, so, I, but, you know... Uncharted, more of my frustration has, has been with the fact that either yeah. he's just roboting his way through it or that a surface that I thought I could go to wasn't tagged arbitrarily and then I get right. mad. Like, why aren't you magically jumping onto this little ledge over here? Can I bring up Far Cry 2? Please. Please do. <laughs> you talking about how like, a hand reaches out and grabs the doorknob? We have left to talk about it, so take one while you can. Um, well, just real quick, uh, related to jumping across things, um, I, I was playing... Far Cry 2, and uh, and I just I just happened upon this huge city, which is weird uh, in that game. And had you not found it, this was before? it the one in the mountains? The yeah, yeah, lots of huts and and uh -huh. just it kind of goes up into the mountains and it's it's a really gorgeous setting. But anyway, I I ended up in this huge firefight because there are I guess a thousand guys with guns in that city. <laughs> and they all like that's you. That's pretty much who yeah. all who lives in that city. I guys are guys who use <laughs> RPGs. Uh, that's how Far Cry Two works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a family of snipers. Um, but so I the snipers. Yeah, <laughs> meet the snipers. Starring Tom Arnold yeah. as sniper. <laughs> Anyway, you found uh, this place. Yeah, I found this mysterious place with you found, enemies. Uh, sniper team. and uh, <laughs> Sniperville, and I was on a roof, and I, I hadn't jumped across anything in this game at all. But and, and the game is clearly not meant to be a, right. a run and yeah. jump. In. But I ended up just kind of while getting shot at from a thousand different directions, leaping across these buildings like something out of the Matrix or whatever, and it was amazing. Like. I'm the game was not built for that at all, but right. because it just happened spontaneously in this engine that you know just wasn't meant for it, it was great. I just I couldn't you felt believe like you were. It, I couldn't you believe were that I pulled it off. Experience. Yeah, I couldn't believe that I pulled it off, and I, I you know I jumped <laughs> off the building and ended up in this Idle alley. Idle thumbs and... praise a surprising emergent <laughs> event in Far Cry Two. <laughs> Stop <Fuck>. the presses. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. no, but I know what you mean. That stuff is amazing when you when yeah. you suddenly realize you're doing something in a game that the game someone did not sit there and decide this person will do this right here yep. with these hotspots. Yeah, I mean that stuff is great. I love it. Yeah, I don't know what that added to the conversation other than Far Cry right, Two is great. <laughs> no, that's right. We got We got to get that yeah, in. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. You guys want to take a break yeah, for a second, or are you going to keep talking? Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to. Like, I I hope I don't sound like too much of a douche about it. I I, I think that you're being a little self conscious. Yeah, probably. I'm basically Be I'm basically enjoying shit. it, but I, you know, I. <laughs> yeah, no, it it, it 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 isn't my kind of game. So it's, I guess, the fact that I, that that I that I don't just hate it is pretty impressive. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I feel it, like I'm just... being kind of a douche about this, but I'll just say that the fact that I don't hate it is pretty impressive. Well, you know, da 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 da. da. Chris Ramo taking a break. <laughs> Video game. So that was a nice break. Yes, we broke. Yep. <laughs> Now we're back Lots together. Lots of embargoes. <laughs> we broke some embargoes. 
We were just talking about Prince of Persia. <laughs> yeah, we were. Speaking of Prince of Persia, Nick, I heard you watched a Prince of Persia trailer. I did. It was pretty good. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. Uh, yeah, no. No, I'm uh, not. <laughs> so what's this game called? So, Prince so, of so Persia? You went to the movie. And Jordan oh, Lichner. Prince of Persia the movie. This isn't a video game. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, it's Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Right. Calling back to our previous discussion yeah, about Prince yeah. of Persia Sands of oh, Time. Oh man, we're second like mad. God. Um, and Jordan Mechner was at this He was there, screen. yeah. It's weird that they held an event. Did he have a The Last Express t-shirt on? <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, no. Did anyone ask him about The Last Express? I was going to be that guy, and then I thought maybe I shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Will you ever be creating a yeah. sequel to your well, classic underappreciated? Somebody actually said, if this if this movie is successful, will we see a uh, Karakateta? Or what's the, what, what's a Kara I can't even fucking say the name of that game. But Karateka? Karateka, yeah. I don't yeah. know how to pronounce it. Yeah. In fact, there was a whole discussion on how to pronounce that game is what that is. Well, he's making a new game. I into. broke that news. It was me. No, I meant mo he, the, the thing was a movie. Oh, was, it's a high, high, high movie well, thing. oh you see, yeah. you had a scoop? Well, this was years ago. I mean, this was like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they showed them the trailer for the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal as the prince. <laughs> Look on your face. No, what? it's a suspicious move. It is. It's, it is a suspicious move. It inspires doubt. Um, did he grapple a pole? Well, the, the <laughs> yeah. way, yeah, he did. <laughs> did he have to um, like find an item to slot into a thing? <laughs> did, he, did he drink from he did, a fountain? He pressed, he pressed a jewel on a dagger and he turned into a sand guy. Wait, what? He, what does he mean? He turned into sand guy? Well, what he goes back in time. He like. I don't oh, know. oh, he turns into like sand particles. That yeah, go whooshing. Yeah, All lots right. of sand particles in this. He doesn't trailer. just. He doesn't just. They don't just take the film and just run it backwards for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that would be closer to the game. Yeah, they, they may. <laughs> they also yeah, sure licensed they Blinks the, t the Time Sweeper. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, so can you say anything about the trailer? I mean, yeah. is it worth saying anything about it? What? Is it, what I mean, uh, is it just a... I don't know how. Why are we? Why, why are we talking about that? this? That's an idiotic thing to ask you. Huh? So, so did they, <laughs> I, re, I retract anything I just said. That's retarded. Um, <laughs> you pressed your finger onto a dagger and turned into sand. For a yeah, second. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask a better question. Did Jordan Mechner have anything interesting to say? Um, he, you know, and he, it wasn't, it wasn't the most interesting thing in the world. It was mostly, you know, generic movie questions, you yeah. know, uh, how, what was it like working with someone? But, uh, it was kind of funny to hear him talk about Jerry Bruckheimer, uh, at a couple of points. Um, just, I mean, I, I, it, it sounds like to me, um, I mean, I don't know. My impression of the trailer is that it's just a big Jerry Bruckheimer movie uh, with the prince and, uh, you know, Alfred Molina as the crazy sidekick sense of humor dude. Um, so, I mean, you know, it might be okay. It might be it, it might be one of those video game movies that sort of just squeaks by, but uh, it didn't look like anything special, that's for sure. Um, I know Disney seems to kind of want it to be the next Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Sure. Um, I don't... I don't know if Jake Gyllenhaal has the Johnny Depp he's no, crazy he's no charisma. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was banter between Jake Gyllenhaal and the princess. Well, there's thing. always going to be some banter. There was, a, there was some banter. There was a little banter. Oh, they there. made you <laughs> sidestep your own point about it. wasn't you were going to say something about Jerry Bruckheimer. It? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was funny. I mean, there were a couple of points. Somebody said like, "What's what was it like?" You know, Jordan working with Jerry Bruckheimer. Uh, kind of maybe maybe that wasn't the tone that they used. Like, <laughs> no, it was more like it was more like. So what was it like working with Jerry Bruckheimer? <laughs> just kind of oh, like, man. yeah. And he was like, he just sort of looked down and smiled and, and thought. He's he's a the kind of guy who always thinks about what he's gonna say, yeah, he does. Uh, you know, carefully. <laughs> and uh, and he just sort of smiled. You and, may not know what that's like listening to the idle thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he thinks Trust about me, what he's going a, to it's say before he says it. Satisfying experience. Yeah. Um. But no, he just sort of smiled and and uh, and looked up and he, you know, Jerry likes big movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and he said that a couple of times throughout this. I, it sounds like, I mean, the way he described his involvement was he wrote the first draft of the screenplay and that was it. Eighteen um, script doctors called in to. Yeah, 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 it's it's one of those focus things. Focus so, test the shit out of it. Yeah, um, he was pretty excited that Ben Kingsley and Alfred Molina were in it. Yeah, um, I'd be excited if yeah my screenplay had those guys in it. Yeah. 
But uh, then again, Ben Kingsley is sort of like doing everything in the world. Yeah. Everyone, everyone <laughs> was really excited when <laughs> Ben Kingsley signed up for the, the latest Uwe Boll movie. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He is he's one of the those, kiss of death at this point, I he's guess. He's one of those guys <laughs> who's sort of simultaneously a potentially... Right, like, yeah, he does actor, have the, the but craft. But he also is one of those it's a job guys. Right. Right, where yeah. he's like, well, whatever. Yep. I mean, I'm in a movie. I'm working. Gave me some money and yeah. I'm working. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just ben really, Kingsley could show up and just destroy everyone. Right. Or he could show up and destroy your film. Well, he does. Or your film could be destroyed. could have been destroying before anyone. Shut yeah. up in either way. What am I talking about? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I, it, it's funny Rewind how, it. I don't know, the further away Jordan Mechner gets from a Prince of Persia thing, the dumber it always looks to me. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, seriously. Like, it's true. I, it's, it is true. And it's it's not deliberate. Uh, like, I, I remember being really excited about um, Prince of Persia Warrior Within, like, mm. early on. I mean, we, I mean, Rattle Thumbs went to E3 and, like, got all excited about it. We're like, oh man, there's going to be a pirate ship in this game. And we yeah. all stoked. And then the closer it got to release, the more I started seeing it, the stupider I thought it looked. And then by the yeah. time it came out, I thought oh, this game looks idiotic. And then I didn't to be like fair, it. you know, I will say one thing: I, I did go back and look at his trailer pitch. He, I, I saw on, that on too. Yeah, right. he posted the yeah. uh, the trailer that he used to pitch Disney. Um, it's actually fairly close to what ended up being the trailer. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, there are actually specific shots in there that are, that were duplicated and used uh, in the movie, um, <laughs> but. You know, I mean, it's just an action movie with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, is what it is my impression of it. And but, sand. And, and, yeah. Does it have crazy evil birds Featuring that sort of Jake swoop Gyllenhaal forever and then dive sand. at you and then turn into sand? <laughs> there are no sand monsters. Is there an he elevator that, said there are no sand you monsters. Know, you have to replay 18 times while <laughs> enemies spawn at you. Yeah. The DVD supports that mode. Nice. <laughs> um, the Blu-ray, pardon. Yeah. The times here. He, he did talk about sort of uh jordan mechner the guy uh, a little bit where, oh yeah did he yeah, take well, those terms uh, let so, me just take a step yeah. back here. i'm gonna tell you about jordan mechner the yeah. guy if you will <laughs> he is the person least likely to actually ever yeah. say something like right that. yeah but somebody had <laughs> ask him like you know you're doing movies and games and like what are you what, what's it what, like being what are you? you well they're like what are you what doing? are like, you what like, are you what are you i don't understand <laughs> but, but uh he's not human yeah no, he was just like, you know, I do uh, graphic... I guess he's involved in the Prince of Persia prequel graphic novel or something. Yeah, he's doing... I, gra- have, I have one of the graphic novels. I mean, yeah. the first one that came out it, yeah. a year or two ago. He's, you know, so he wants to just keep doing a little bit of everything, which is what's cool about that That's guy. what's awesome about it. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's one of my favorite game designers who isn't a actual full-time game designer. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I think guys like that are so interesting. You know, yeah. they write. He's, he's an artist, like a visual artist, I mean. He's game designer. He has... Produced or directed documentary films. Yeah, um, he's just really interesting. I, I I like guys like that who actually pursue various disciplines and actually do different things well. It makes games seem less stupid. Yeah, exactly. When a guy, when a <laughs> yeah, guy right. like that, there's someone out there who yeah. does many different things, and one of them is games. So it's exactly. not just like right. You know. Yeah, and it's it's not just his career, and it's not just something that like someone paid him to be the Hollywood guy who comes in and. Like gets a script credit right. or whatever. And I mean, and I, I don't mean this against everyone in the entire world, who, including me, has the job on the path that I have. But it's not also. Oh just, no, of course. I love a video game, so I will make one, and that's all that I will ever do. <laughs> right? No, I mean, obviously, <laughs> like you, which is whatever. You, that's what I am. So yeah, no, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, <laughs> I never suggest people shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't be full time game designers. But it, but it, you know, I think it is <clears> cool <throat> that. <laughs> I would, ha, I would never. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Your mustache is bristling. <laughs> Monocle popping out. Monocle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wig. Po- <flying laughs> Wig. <toward> <laughs> <laughs> bow tie spinning. Well, yeah, possibly. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> you went too far with the bow tie. <laughs> Hardly a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> Monocle popping. <laughs> Uh, what are we talking recursive, about? Recursive. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> this episode has a twist ending. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just scandalized <laughs> about everything. <laughs> a twist! <laughs> tw- Idle Thumbs isn't ending. <laughs> oh, no, it actually is. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was in poor taste, maybe. That was terrible. Um, uh, that so was the anyway. spinning bow tie of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, that was my way of saying we've been talking about the Prince right. of Persia trailer for a long time. Yes. Yeah, why are we doing that? I don't know. Hot scoops, though. There's a new Prince of Persia game coming out. Based on the movie? 
I don't know. He was just like, I, you know, I'm not gonna. I can't, well, confirm, I can't, I can't confirm anything. <laughs> but uh, possibly. Why do we keep doing this? We have to, this is horrible. Stop, imme- stop immediately. Sorry. So anyway, what you're saying is surprise. Successful franchise with movie tie-in has new games. Yeah. Yep. Hinted at. Yeah. Tantalizingly at press event for film. Was it? Oh, never mind. I'm starring not Raul Julia yeah, as start. the prince. Don't start. <laughs> Although, actually, f- a funny thing about Alfred Molina, I completely, I mean, I knew this, but I, I forgot. He actually was, I mean, one of the inspirations for Prince of Persia was the first 10 minutes of Raiders, and, and he was in the first 10 minutes of Raiders, so that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Sweet. It's going to be great. It actually could be. It might be. It might be. It might be, it might be I, that trailer, I, you can't, you can't really. I hate you. you know, <sighs> what are you doing? <sighs> Yeah, get out of here. <sighs> <laughs> so it's terrible and might be not terrible. It was just a standard trailer. Who the hell knows? Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. Um, they, cool. They flew you out, just... though, to Persia to screen that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Bangladesh. Did you meet the prince. God, why are we doing this? All right. Uh, we've been playing Machinarium. Hey. hey, hey yes, we have. I have beat you? it. Oh, when? Whoa. Good job. I completed a game. It was really short. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I I got distracted by all the stuff I was playing when when I got yeah. Torchlight. So I <laughs> I have a lot of un, like half finished games yeah. right now, mm-hmm. um, including Machinarium. Yeah, it's a it's cool. It's, it's a, a cool game. It, it's it's nice. It's it's you know it's the most like linear. It's such a super specific adventure game ever. Thing, right. Yeah. It's, but, uh, it's like a basically a two D point and click, cool hand drawn. A uh, yeah. little adventure game that you just, you've got a little robot and you go around and you solve puzzles. And it's, you know, uh, to me, it's its not even so much a video game. It's more just a cool way to experience an atmosphere and just yeah. this art that this guy made. And, I mean, it's and it's just, just watch it little things happen. It's just like a sort of a curiosity or something. It's its cool. I like it. Yep. Anyone who's played the Samorost games, it's yeah. the same, or, same I mean, guy, same studio. It's, it's very much the sort of most pro- pro-grade version of any of the sort of flash uh, room to room kind of hidden object adventure right. games most mm. of which are total bullshit uh, yeah I mean yeah. Um, the difference be- between those and this is that this game is really really impeccably made and right. to make it feel a little bit less like a hidden object game they make it so you have to steer your little character to different waypoints where yeah, which kind of sucks actually it does it does suck but the the one the one redeeming factor to it is that it actually makes you it gives you Stop that one and, like, like look, yeah. and you get like that that three percent feeling that you are maybe kind of controlling this character, whereas right, yeah. Samurai's it is like you're playing a web page Weird. where it is uh, you're yeah. just sweeping yeah. the screen with your cursor, hand, yeah. and then you find something, and then yeah. I guess then the guy is literally just a time delayed version of your cursor who goes over, yeah. and then you no, find it's... out what he can do. Whereas at least with this, you think, oh, this area maybe I can investigate it, and then the fog of war lifts basically, and you can cursor interact with those things, but it is. It also yeah. slows the game down in an annoying way. No, it's definitely better than than Sam Ross in that respect. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a cool. How far in did you get? Oh, I did just... you get to the point where the city actually sort of opens up and there are like ten different or no, screens? No, I, I haven't gone. I, I just I first. saved the dog. Oh, okay. Actually, like right after that, you end up getting to. a Oh place no, I did get to that point. Yes, I'm in the city now with the robot band. Yes, yes, and yes. Stuff. And I've done. A, I've beat a couple. I've completed that, a couple of puzzles. That yeah. that did actually surprise me about that game because I was expecting it to be more like Sam Ross, where it is just there is a room, you Completely, complete the puzzle, you go yeah, to the next yeah. room, and <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you you get to a point where where it is you sort of unlocked a bunch of elevators and doors and stairwells and things and the puzzle the actual sort of solvable space expands out to about a dozen rooms i think maybe 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 only eight or nine but it 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 starts to get that feeling of an old 2d adventure game for a little while in there where which, you actually can explore where it's just yeah. yeah you have to actually sort of remember back to the things that occurred and uh things affect things that are spatially very far yeah. apart and that was nice because i don't know i was yeah. surprised that that was there but then at the same time yeah it is just you're yeah, you have to do the exact click everything stuff once, that, yeah, and the right. game is is completed, except for occasional. There's some mini gamey stuff. stuff. Yeah, but but it is you know, f- as as much as like as basic as it is as a game, there there is some nice a nice curve in there where at the beginning of the game every single screen is self-contained. Mm-hmm. You don't retain items between them. Then you start having items. Maybe you'll 
keep an item from screen to screen. Then you start getting to the point where puzzles bleed over from screen to screen, right. and it, it it opens up in a in a way that kind of slowly introduces you. It's it's nice, you yeah, know, for cool. what it is. It's cool and well made, and also just and it looks nice. The, and it sounds yeah, nice. the 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 sort of just general feeling of that world, and what little sort of story and sort of and history and structure of it get told by the time you get to the end of the game is really nice yeah. and it's it's nice <laughs> it it made me wish that there was a more fully realized game in that universe with that style that wasn't yeah. like i know that the guys at what is it amantia uh, amanita design amanita they obviously like that really really controlled uh thing that the sam ross thing and this thing where it is just there's not a lot of agency over your character yeah. it's as you click a thing and then they tell you what your character is going to do with it but right. it, that world and that style made me wish that there was a more even just just at least a more traditionally higher agency adventure game where i could dig around in it more i really wanted to sort of root around in that what i haven't done an adventure game in a while and i also quickly um Nick, what was the thing of the soundscape of this game? It sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Sound design is really good. It's nice to listen to. That reminds me, Nick, when you were playing Torchlight, did you ever try turning the music off? No. I did. Um, because as much as I, from what I've played of Diablo 3, I don't like the music nearly as much as I like Torchlight's music. Right. And maybe maybe Diablo 3 has other music. Yeah. You know, that's, that's cooler mm -hmm. that I haven't heard yet. But based on the few hours we've played of that game so far. I think Torchlight's score is superior. But one thing I like about Diablo 3 is that they sometimes just drop the music out and just oh. let you explore in silence. Mm -hmm. Not, But but not silence because there's an excellent soundscape behind it. I I tried to simulate... Torchlight has music going all the time. It's Matt Ullman's excellent score. It's always excellent. Yep. But I tried just for experimentation to turn off the music and just listen to Torchlight. And it's got a great soundscape under it. Mm. You know, you've got the little drops of water in the background. Your dog will occasionally shake and you hear the clink of the, the collar. And the, I and did just, notice some of that, yeah. It's really nice. And it and I, I kind of actually wish, and you know, someone can probably mod this in in like two seconds, but uh, <laughs> that the music would occasionally just, when the track ends, instead of looping, it would uh, just kind of you would sometimes just get hear a, a few weird minutes sort of, of just yeah. silence, yeah, and it just it's cool. I, I find myself actually going back and forth, and it's great both ways. You get either an amazing soundtrack or you get an amazing soundscape, and it's just uh, you know someone playing Torchlight. Maybe you want to try that because I thought it was cool. Yeah, Matt Alma did all the sounds too. So he did exactly. So that guy is responsible for all yep. the awesome stuff. He really is phenomenally talented. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I mean, it, I didn't want to go into too I, like, yeah, I didn't want too overboard yeah, during that interview. I didn't, but I didn't either. God, the sound yeah. the soundtrack is incredible. I mean, yeah. it's just great, especially yeah. the, the the main town theme. Oh yeah, God. yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty good. An, just excellent. Um, cool. Also, I said one other thing. This is so stupid. I was trying to find a way to shoehorn this in, and I'm going to. <laughs> um, I said the word curiosity during ah! uh, sorry <laughs> during uh, uh, the Machinarian discussion, and that actually reminds me of uh, this crazy place I went in Los Angeles. If anyone oh. finds themselves in or in or near Los Angeles, go to the the Museum of Jurassic Technology. <laughs> it is a crazy weird thing. It's basically it's a house. It's on Venice Boulevard, I think, and it's it's a museum built into basically what is a two story house. Uh, it is essentially a analogous to those, like, I don't know, 17th, 18th century, like, weird pseudo-bullshit curiosity museums where they're all done as if everything in there is real, but you just, you know someone's pulling your leg. Like, someone clearly must have just bullshitted this weird, like, mammoth fossil that could not possibly actually look like what they're claiming it looks like. And the, like, you know... Uh, sort of physiological processes behind this Pro could not possibly have been what they claim they are, but but maybe it is. It's in a museum, and it looks very real, and it's behind a glass case and stuff. And that's basically what, the, what this museum is. It's like a weird, strange, just collection of things, some of which is real and some of which isn't. And it's really hard to tell which is which, mm. and it's really fascinating. And, Some and, sort of believe it or not situation. Not, but not no, because <laughs> it doesn't present itself like that. It's it's completely uh, as it, I mean it it doesn't. It's not trying to like go like look at this crazy thing. I mean it really is just as if you're in a museum and it's saying this is this, this is that, and uh, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to describe it. It's so strange, um, but there's just weird shit in there, just strange weird things mixed with actual real weird things 
and uh, I would recommend going to it. What's it called again? The Museum of Jurassic Technology. They they change they change the exhibits every once in a while. That's been around for about twenty years, I guess. Um, there's like, as far as I can tell, this extremely elaborate, I think, fictional exhibit about the <laughs> one of the guys who wrote this ridiculous book called like Ablissence or something, that, and it's this whole bizarre fictional story, but then it's woven in with actual real people, and you never know which is which unless you now that the internet exists and you can look stuff up but some of it is still hard to verify i don't know it's fascinating it's, it's a bizarre weird thing and i would recommend going there it's sort of a pseudo interactive experience so i tying it into a video game in that way cool, cool. Do you look wanna, it up you want to disappear for a second and then come back with a reader mail yeah let's do that all right all oh right. maybe in this break i can just go ahead i just i just wanted to plug league of legends really quickly because that's coming out this week oh do it yeah during this break, Nick will plug the <laughs> Legends. Yeah, no, so I, you do your thing. It's coming out. Uh, yeah, it's coming out, and uh, they added a bunch of stuff recently, and it's really good. And what I, did I they add? They added a new map, uh, which is a big oh, event. Oh, two lane map. Yeah, which is a big event for a Dota game because it's like you know. Yeah, because Dota has messing. one map. Or like well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you're messing with a very tested formula, but. Right. Uh, uh, it's it's actually really fun. Um, they did a really good job with that, and that's a free game that people should try. If they don't know anything about Dota, I would just go give it a shot because you might like it. And it's free. And it's free. So there's League of Legends good again. Job. Okay. We're just basically as auto thumbs winds down. I guess basically what we're doing here is just plugging the shit out of yep. PC games by small developers yeah. that we want to succeed. Yeah. So yeah, I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. Let's take a break. Video game. So uh, thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kenny Lucas. What you're you're gonna be doing community coordination? So it's time for us to just start heaping uh, right, undue, yeah. undue blame <laughs> all yeah. over you guys. <laughs> yeah. Stuff you're not in control of. <laughs> all right. So Kenny Lucas writes, "Dear Thumbs, you seem to be experts on video games thing. How do you feel the word video games should be spelled out? Should it be video games with a space in between? <laughs> Two words. No <laughs> Two words. There you go. Correct. Sorry. Moving on. That's amazing." Uh, anyone who has the Idle Thumbs Journal of Games will know that this is yeah. our uh, opinion because we have an entire two bro spread. broad broadsheet spread dedicated to video games being two words. Yep, um, the best spread in the in the paper. It's also discussed in our latest webcomic. All right, so uh, Steve Farrell writes, "Hey Thumbs, I'm really interested in Dragon Age, but I'm torn between the console and PC versions. I guess this is like the weird like letter to the editor, like or dear Abby, like oh, advice. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Day of torn. emails. Well, because I had to get rid of all the emails. Well, not get rid of. But most <laughs> we had of them to erase without reading all of it. No, <laughs> um, most of them would just make us sad to read. So." Uh, he says, I'm really interested in Dragon Age, but I'm torn between the console and PC versions. It is much more comfortable for me to play on 360, but I was a huge Baldur's Gate fan, so I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice not playing it on PC. I'm torn because I want to pre-order it from the ex for the extras, but I can't decide. Will you guys get this game? If so, what platform? Love the show. Keep up the good work. Eh, P.S. Fucknick. <laughs> he may not know. <laughs> Sorry, that's your new pen name? P.S. Fucknick? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I... I mean, the, the I'm definitely looking forward to this game, and I'm version, definitely yeah. getting it on PC. Get it on yeah, PC, yeah. says Idle Thumbs. Least surprising, yeah, well, least, least least surprising answer ever. It's a yeah. shock. I mean, uh, yeah. I Well, they, they there is no overhead camera for the 360 version. You're right. locked to that third-person thing. So if that's not important to you, but even beyond that, the controls you weren't a big fan of. I was fine with the controls. I didn't, I didn't personally like them, but I... But I, but I think it's they would just be not perfectly fine. Like I think the controls would be fine on the console, but you're you're limited in how many camera choices you have. Yeah, and you also have to do radial menu. I just don't really like radial menus very much. Like I, yeah, actually, come to think about, I, I, I thought the console controls worked, but I think yeah, I mean, if you're I going think to have if you if you're prefer... like if you were fine with Mass Effect or something on a console, yeah. you'd probably be fine with it. It's just the the difference is. On the PC, you do get... I mean, if the guy's a big Baldur's Gate fan, yeah. you might want the option to play it like Baldur's Gate, which you won't be able to do on the console. It's... I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, I think people will probably enjoy it both ways. I definitely would only... I personally, I would only get this game on PC, but... It's actually all launching simultaneously, too. It is. So. Yeah, it's even, a on, even on the PS3. Yeah. They, they were it's gonna a rare the thing PS3, these but, days, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, also, I mean... multi -plat. For what it's worth, like, some of the texture work on this game on the 360 is garbage. Yeah, At I least, so. well, I mean, maybe, I mean, I don't know. I, in that press preview, it was 
Yeah, but it's a huge game. I can't see them going through and doing another pass. Well, it's going to be on uh, using on the HD stuff. DVD attachment. All right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine either way. But but know that unlike most multi-platform ports, there is actually a gameplay system difference. <laughs> Nick was amused by the mentioning of an <laughs> HD DVD <laughs> attachment. Bro, how I, I spaced for a that? second, and then you said that, and I, it kind of came back. And I, yeah, no, no, I, I have it. Yeah, it's great. You have one. The HD DVD. Oh, yeah. Do you have any HD DVDs? I do. What What are they? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> Prince of Persia movie trailer. <laughs> I think it came with King Kong. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, actually it did. Yeah, I think I may have two others. I don't have that. Thing. Children of Men, maybe. I don't know. Uh, John Race. Hey, thumbs. Really enjoy the podcast. Your discussion on episode. Forty-eight in space on key, uh, keyboard overlays, game backends, and maps reminded me of a pack-in. Really, more of a pain in the ass uh, since he was no value to the consumer. Still, it blew, blew my mind as a wee nerdling. The Commodore sixty-four version of Elite had the copy protection scheme where it would draw a set of characters on the screen visually distorted. Only by holding a weird plastic prism up to the screen could the unscrambled code be deciphered, so that if you entered it and launched the game, it was wizardry, if you will. Uh, it appears it was called Lens Lock, and that someone had done a much better job documenting documenting it. I can't speak or read today documentary uh, as well as some other With classically bad copy protection methods um that's crazy i never had a thing like that no there was like the, the <laughs> wheels and there are all kinds of wheels i plugged like, it into a tv that was far bigger than the uh one that yeah, shipped right. the machine <laughs> that was, my was first unable thought, to play the game i, I guess yeah. at that time they probably assumed no tvs <laughs> existed that were bigger than that one exact size very few existed that were big you could I don't know. I thought that. I mean, a big screen TV was a huge no, but I mean, deal at that time. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't know enough about the Commodore 64 hardware, but if it's anything like the Apple II and other computers of that time, you could plug it into a household TV or into like the 12 inch monitor that was branded. Oh right. Uh, but maybe this maybe the system is a super cool system. I mean, if it's just a lens, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. A majestic lens. <laughs> um. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paul, or Locally Unseen, I guess as he calls himself, writes, you're out of thumbs. Like a lot of people, I recently started listening to the show, and I've been listening to the older episodes to catch up. Welcome I, to episode 49. I, I, I love the show, <laughs> and it's the only podcast I regularly listen to now. <laughs> oh, because it blows all the other ones away. Okay, so his question is, in the episode I'm currently the listening Puffins. to, episode 26... <laughs> You mentioned natural selection in your in your revisited selection of, in discussion about mods. So here's a set of rapid fire questions in traditional reader mail form. Did you like the game enough that you're looking forward to natural selection too? Related to that, what do you think of mod developers going on to make commercial games? Is it living the dream or selling out? Finally, what do you think about the balance of listening to fans and maintaining developer vision for a game, especially with respect to social media? Uh, thanks for my reading my email, etc. Okay. Uh, I can answer not... the last question because it's easy. Do it. I think every developer listens to what their fans have to say, but I think people on the internet are very confused about how that feedback is taken. Right. It doesn't leap. Yeah. It does, I mean, I think we've answered this question before, probably in around episode 27. We must do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I mean, that sort of thing never leaps out of a forum and into a design document or like right. into an internal wiki, but just sort of as a sounding board for where you're at and just sort of what do these people think that they want is always an interesting question to ask uh, in terms of feedback because, well, seriously, no, I know, I know, what no. people ask for on a, on a web forum no, like, yeah. is not necessarily what they want That's you true. to deliver in a game. It's their articulation of a need that they you know, are expecting to be fulfilled, and you can answer that. You can answer that request in a different way, or yeah. you can sort of say, oh, yeah. well, I think what these people are really going to like this thing that they're not expecting, but we'll deliver on that. I mean, I don't... Yeah, I mean, there's a difference... What I really between... want is 18 guns. Right. Exactly. The no, difference between between being able to to use that feedback to identify the problem and having the problem given to you by that person. I mean, someone might suggest something that reveals something that needs to be addressed, but it necess does not necessarily need to be addressed using the exact right. I mean, design I think, choice that person has prescribed. I think using them, yeah. Like I mean, just a lot of a lot of like I personally really like Ed just sort of as someone who makes things creatively. Uh, when people present me with a problem. Uh, to solve is is a f far more valuable yeah. sort of thing mm -hmm. than someone providing you with a solution and asking you to build it. So right. if you treat the feedback that your community gives you as problems that they want you to solve with your product, it's that's you're gonna you know I mean then everyone goes home a lot happier than when people on a forum say, "Here's how I'm gonna solve your game design." It's like, well, that's obviously I'm not gonna do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, that and I think that. 
you know, I mean, every developer, pro- I, don't, I don't know if every developer reads what's on a forum, but the ones that do, most of them probably are coming at it from that approach. In, in, if, if it's a developer who reads community stuff and also delivers products that people like, at least, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe, also- I, maybe I'm speaking for too many people. I'll back well. that up. No one reads anything. <laughs> it's going it's going to differ between I'm, yeah i'm sure that too, depending on the, what the, kind of games they're making yeah and, and yeah just yeah. The, the way that that conduit works yeah. i'm sure it changes from place to place but that's that's at least how i how i see that stuff and i do i i end up reading probably too much stuff that people say about things online um but that's one thing that's really cool though about these mid-sized developers like like runic uh there was an example recently where somebody linked a forum thread some guy has I guess what astigmatism for uh, like camera shake like it it I don't know if it was a medical thing I, I can't quite remember what his but oh yeah right yeah and uh, um, like two posts later a developers like oh I just added that option in the settings go ahead I mean that well, kind yeah, of stuff is that's really well, cool he added one. it he added like the ability to go into the yeah into the, the game, uh, the game yeah, the, yeah as opposed actual, to in like yeah. the UI itself but right. yeah but yeah, it was like I mean, three hours yeah in three hours a yeah. guy from Runic Games had gone yeah that's modified torchlight I mean, to support this guy's eye condition I'm admittedly speaking f- like partly because it's a thing that I like about my own employer but it is cool at studios where it's like your your employee count is a two digit number. Uh, people can go onto those boards and just right. pose a question or start a discussion thread and the odds are extremely high that someone will be posting from the same machine that they are concurrently using to develop the game that they're talking to that community member about and uh, that sort of stuff is cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. Games. What were the other questions that guy had? I actually, I forgot that there were other questions and then I exited out of that particular email and now I'm trying to find it again. Oh, oh the second one was... um. I can't remember. Nice. It was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, no. Uh, what is game? What is game? No, oh, man. Now I almost remembered it for a second after asking myself what is game. <laughs> We're awesome. Oh. We're naturals at this whole podcast yeah, thing. We got it down. Um. <laughs> but if, but be, if we keep this up, it'll really take off. <laughs> Jesus, what was it? Oh, hey. I can't remember. I'm this sorry. is like everyone is listening. This is like going to see the horror movie, being like, "Come on, just don't, op- yeah. don't open the door." He was Come obviously yeah. asking about this. Right. <laughs> everyone has remembered. Oh, this is retarded. Yeah, yeah, I can't find it. Okay, well, I'm gonna go on to another thing oh, that maybe oh. maybe you guys can address this question, and then that guy's gonna be I so disappointed. Find, well, I'm gonna try to find it as we read like, something else. 23 um, episodes from now. Okay, natural you, Selection was the one, the oh, first right. part. Natural Selection. Okay, are you, go. Did you play Natural keep, Selection and are you excited for Natural Selection 2? I right. played the you five answer that and I'm going to keep looking. So I don't know. I, I played 10 minutes. So, <laughs> but, but I know people who are really into that game, uh, like still are, um, and are incredibly excited for Natural Selection 2. It's something that I missed for the most part and i'm looking forward to this yeah, sequel I'm, if I'm, only so that i can jump on the, just the fact that everyone has talked about natural selection for so long yeah. makes me really intrigued by the second game yeah but yeah. i don't know enough about any of that stuff to say anything about it so yeah. what was his third question <laughs> <laughs> the the third one was the community it was the second one what was the first trying question? to unlock <laughs> natural selection okay what was the second question <laughs> video games is two words <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, this is funny here in the meantime. <laughs> um, the rest of this is now going to just be delayed. I know. <laughs> uh, Colt Ezrael Halam writes, um, or something, Hey dudes, I'm a huge fan of the podcast as far as I'm concerned. You're the only podcast worth listening to. Anyway, I wanted to email Facepalm. I demoed the new two-lane Le- League of Legends map to oh, Nick this past week, Twisted and it finally line. struck me that you do the Idle Thumbs podcast, Nick. Uh, <laughs> your name sounded familiar, but I never put two and two together. Oh, yeah. Thanks for continued support of our game. Uh, it's awesome hearing it on the podcast every once in a while. Oh, wait. That was from uh, somebody on Riot? What? Wait, what? What's going on? Huh? I guess. Oh, um, someone who demoed the level to you. Yeah. Oh, demoed. Oh, I thought I thought he just see, played it. See how I'm at Riot Games. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yes. Go figure. Small world. Yeah. No, it's fun playing with those guys. I actually crushed GameSpy. Uh, oh yeah, it was me and two riot guys, and we 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 demolished. Are you spy. and two riot guys? Yeah, yeah. No, but you're good at this game. I know. No, I hey, I was leading, man. Nice. Uh, yeah. What do you think of mod developers going on to make commercial games? Yeah. Is it living the dream or selling out? Oh yeah, that's an easy there one. 
It's living it the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> it's definitely not selling out. No, yeah. it's not. I mean, no. yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I feel like there's probably in in pockets of the mod community and in like the the sort of readership of a site like Tig Source or what there's there I'm sure are people who are who for whom seeing their favorite like bedroom programmer go yeah. commercial is yeah. like that guy is selling out and leaving the community. But on the other hand, eh, if you're someone who makes good games and then someone wants to give you money to make more good games, sweet. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's my the people who are listening to this podcast while we're trying to think of that question, like they know what that question I is. Know, and they're exactly. like, no, don't bother. No, keep going. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we've the worst of all worlds. Yeah. It took forever to get to it. And then yeah. it's kind of obvious. The other two questions were good though. No, they're good. Um, <laughs> Thanks guy. You'll, you'll hear this in a week or two. <laughs> yeah, really. You'll hear us making fun of you after spending a long time trying to find your question. Yeah. David S. Uh, has a fairly long question. Basically the gist of it is, um, he, he beat Uncharted 2 recently and he was really, ex uh, impressed by the game's, uh, <laughs> what? Nothing. Keep going. The game's voice acting and, uh, overall script. <laughs> uh, he says it struck me as the closest I'd heard a game come to normal human speech. And, uh, mm. he says that applied to both the cutscenes and the in-game narration and anything. And I, his question, I guess, is why do video game scripts and voice acting skew so far from reality most of the time? Why did it take until late 2009 for dialogue in a big commercial game to arrest me as accurate? Are there challenges inherent to the medium? Is it an issue of priority? Is it that dialogue is aimed at a lowest common denominator? What is he, you know? Money. I don't think it's money. Money? <laughs> no? I, I really don't think that it's money. No? Um, I mean, I know that like... In some cases. I know that like is. where... Well, where, what are we where, talking, where, are we talking where, about? Dialogue or are we talking about voice capture? Voice performance. Voice performance specifically. Voice what performance in was. games. Like, I know... Okay. Like... The the games that I work on at Telltale have been hit or miss in the voice department, but I think that consi we we consistently hit above average for video game acting performances, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's admittedly extraordinarily biased, um, but I don't even know why I brought that up, because Uncharted 2 <laughs> does an amazing job with their voice performance, and I think yeah. what it comes down to is caring about direction, casting and caring about yeah. direction. Yeah. Um, from what little experience I have working, like being in the studio when, when people are recording voice for a video game, uh, I, and just from what sort of what I hear people in the studio talking about, I think the tendency in games is you bring the actor in, you put down the page of your script, you fly right the fuck yeah, down that yeah. page. If there's a one that you, if there's a take you don't like, you go back and fly down the entire page a second time. Well, especially if that Be person... Before you can put the brakes on, the guy is on the next page just going for it. And I, My I, guess is actually, in that case, money would be a hindrance. Or, uh, when you get a big name actor and you have him for a day and you have to get through all of those lines, I, I guess that that's probably... That, a, that is probably part of it, but I also just... I think that... it. You just you have to you you you, 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 you do have to be willing to take the time in the yeah. studio to get the takes. You have to have someone in the studio who well, is it's using your time well. Also, it's mm -hmm. actually communicating good direction. I mean, there was an interview yeah. with Ellen McLean who was Gladys in Portal, and she the announcer in Team Fortress Two, and she was the Overwatch in Half Life Two, and she was saying that one of the things that she loves so much about working with Valve as opposed to working with other video game companies is that they actually direct her and they actually well, yeah, communicate that's, that's what, I mean. you need to, what the, needs to be said. The guy in the booth, I think at a lot of game companies, you end up with just the audio producer maybe or something is is there or like the, the sort of studio voice producer or voice director. Um, probably freakishly often without uh, the writer or even, I don't know, maybe I, I'm... I'm just bullshitting all of that. I don't really know, but that's that's always that's often the impression that I get at least. Um, but yeah, like you can tell with Valve's voice direction that they have people in the room with the actors who really care about context, who really care about the timing yeah. uh, and the tone of the of the delivery. And I just I, I get the impression that where that actually does fall apart is at the is actually at in the booth in the booth when yeah. the actors there when they're which is the weirdest thing to me because that is when you're spending the most money. Mm. That's when you think you should be having as many right, eyes yeah. as possible on that moment where it's like you've got the studio time, you've got engineers in there, you probably have some of your dev team in there, you have an actor who you're paying a lot if it's, yeah, a, yeah. If it's a union gig and if it's a large role. And I think that people at that point, that's when it's like, ah, it's just game audio. 
uh, from a from a sort of scoping budget standpoint, and then I and that's that seems well, also, to be where it crumbled. I mean, the script also has to be good. Yeah. Well, but, and also, and, yeah. and on the on the topic of the script, like there has to be enough in there that you can provide motivation, right. you can provide direction. I mean, right. That's the thing. If it is just there is fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Lock and well, load, the, the, yeah. rock and roll. Right. Yeah. I mean, that there is, are a lot of quests like, and things uh, in games that are just uncharted too. Like I think that's what we were talking about last week with with Steve. Is that when mm. like and it is in, in the first two seconds of the game, but when the when the guy says what could possibly go wrong and then other people laugh it off i know that was my example from last week but it was like hey you know sounds s- like what it would sound like it was like, like s- yeah. sort of self-aware sarcasm but wasn't what could possibly go wrong <laughs> dun, dun, dun. But then, no, no, even even that can be played off wrong where it's like someone says it that way then someone's like oh you you always say that yeah and right. oh and then like the scene sort of awkwardly fades out as the characters go back into sort of mocap, <laughs> yeah. uh, like calisthenics for a second. That is ultimate video game. That's <laughs> yeah, actually, really is. Brutal Legend occasionally does stuff I was like that, which Brutal is Legend, really yeah. unfortunate because the actual voice perform vocal performances in that game are excellent. Yeah, but but occasionally the camera lets it down. It does. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of little pieces, little <laughs> points where you where you yeah. can drop the ball on that, yeah, and yeah. if you don't keep them all going, it. It, your your moment or something yep. it falls apart weirdly. It's quite difficult to recreate the essence of a real human being when you're yep. doing real time well, 3D and, yeah, graphics just, with a disembodied voice. Yeah. Also, I mean, once you have voice actors in a booth reading a script, uh, especially in the styles that we're talking about here, you're not only recreating a human, but you're recreating the sort of stylized, very visually and tonally directed nature of a film or an animated film which is like the most precise right like a good version of that is is there's a lot of rules uh, mm-hmm. for what people are expecting to come across like uncharted 2 does not sound like actual people talking uncharted 2 right, sounds like well that's what the person as, said in the email mo- but, oh right well it but creates the essence of it but like it creates how it, your brain it matches up yeah. very closely with your expectations exactly. for how that sort of conversation goes after watching a good indiana jones movie yeah yeah uh, right uh and they they hit all the notes really well in that game yep yeah uh i agree completely yeah yep um, I don't know if I, if the, blah, I mean, blah 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 blah. There was probably there was probably other email in here. It was also yeah. I will just say that I said a lot yeah. of stuff just now, and a lot of it is inference from very little information that I've just sort of picked yeah. up from various things. So no, that was good. I, I'm sure someone's going to write in and be like, well, actually, in most game companies, the creative director is in the booth all the time, and the writer is in the booth all the time, and I wouldn't know because I work at a that's little, kind of worse adventure game because company, it means but, it's not paying off as much. Yeah, but as that, this yeah, show. right. Yeah, I, but it just that's. Probably that is how it's going that to is know how it's done everywhere. How, so how it, we probably won't get that email. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> it, that is all, always how it has felt to me. Is that even, like the the script in games not often that solid, but sometimes probably there's more to work with than well than what comes out of the out of the actual voice performances. It also depends on what ga- kind of game we're talking about. Where if there yeah, are no, like th- we're done with this. Fuck you, Nick. <laughs> No, what, what, what are you going to say? Say your. I was going to say if there are four or five strong characters to work with and they have the time to develop that character in the booth and, you know. Oh, yeah. Develop a rapport. Uh, uh, what's a the rapport, word? Rapport. But they don't rapport. usually do that. Don't they don't know. usually that's, record that's, simultaneously. That's, well, no, 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 no. But it, just, even the, just that one person. Even with the actor having. I don't know. I mean, at least the, the way we do it is we put out auditions, get, a, get one person back that you like, or, you know, you end up with your top five or whatever say we're making the calls to this guy bring him into the booth and maybe you'll tweak the performance a little bit of like you did this and we liked that but we want you to take it a little bit in this direction go for it and uh the, i don't think it's like a pixar film very often where it's like oh we've got tom hanks in here and we're gonna, we're gonna oh, workshop no. this character Bounce for two off. or three days yeah. well i didn't mean I, I just mean that at least that person is doing enough dialogue to where they're comfortable with the character yeah, yeah, and in the saying. game in, in the game treats that character right. differently as because a, it's well, a central as character coming in as opposed to like, reloading what exactly well or or just you know a lot of like random people in the world that you know have speaking lines that hey. are important <laughs> yeah exactly yeah 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 I mean that to me is you know is is where game dialogue usually falls apart is when there is just a huge amount sweet, of sweet sweet barks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. just incidental dialogue yeah I well mean, totally or just true. you know a random guy yeah that's what I mean like the quest yeah. the guy who like you meet one time for right. that yeah, quest yeah. or what like, are you buying <laughs> <laughs> fucking masterpiece yeah. yeah what are you selling. <laughs> Stay a while and listen. <laughs> Whoa! Why didn't I do that on the one match? Uh, why? Yeah. Why did you turn into Rip Torn? 
<laughs> All right. So uh, I guess this is our last one. Cameron, uh, Cameron writes, Dear Thumbs, I wrote you last week and you read my email, which is exciting. Um, he, okay, it's more of that. Welcome I was at back. Ikea yesterday and saw this odd <laughs> bench type half chair thing. It was confusing. The attached tag only served to add to my confusion. Perhaps you being professors, prof- professors, professors, professor, professor, being uh, professionals in the gaming industry. Oh, professionals, <laughs> <laughs> professors. No, well, yeah, I did too. Perhaps you being professors in the gaming industry, <laughs> being professors, <laughs> having in, have insight into what this gaming position might be and how this strange furniture may serve to supplement it. Eagerly, eagerly awaiting your wisdom, camera. eagerly. So eagerly. He, he includes. <laughs> He includes a photograph of an Ikea chair that has a tag to it that says, rest your arms here when in gaming position. (laughs) There appear to be no arms on this chair. Oh, it's for... (laughs) I don't know what this... You know what this chair is for? I don't. It's for Twilight Princess only. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the, it has the, no arms so that the you can worst just chair. Slouch, for, oh, I see. Slouch yes. your arms down over right. the sides. Oh, man. Bringing it back to episode three or whatever episode, was. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's for Cheeto hands <laughs> activation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if I, make a, if I make a DLC post on the blog, I'll conclude this picture. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we got. This is probably a super long episode. Sorry about that. Um, I think yep. we got to wrap it up, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Video game. I think he shows up on the podcast just from thanks for sitting on the couch, doesn't yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, whatever. That makes that episode more hilarious. To me. <laughs> it's just oh, that other guy, the, like this other like industry luminary. Yeah, also, yeah. he's just checking his email over there. This is how we roll here at Apple Thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Rudkin, developer at Telltale Games, and Steve Gaynor, designer on Bioshock 2, and Chris Ramo, uh, editor at large of the Art and Business of Making Games, present We're Gonna Fuck Up Your Press Plans. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a weird. Why am I recording this? <laughs> I'm never gonna get a live performance. Embargo Busters. <laughs> Oh, it was because Jared misspoke in a hilarious way that, that spawned that voice. We were talking about Zelda 2, and that combined into Zeldu, which, uh, <laughs> of course, turned into Veldu, which is my <laughs> favorite thing in the world. Uh, of, uh, so that is Edwin's game, uh, The Legend of Zeldu. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so I had to. Do I had or to sh- don't. So don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, we'll just beep it all out. Did you listen to that last week? <laughs> yeah. You know, when we all I actually did. Oh, no, I did listen to it. I, I, in fact, I was surprised at how much was left in. What? There's uh, no nothing single was left in. The Borderlands. Uh, that was the word. only thing. I know, I know. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's why I was surprised. It's like, <laughs> no, it is. Oh, man, you'd have the Borderlands all over that one or whatever. <laughs> like, what? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, that cat was already out of the fucking bag. I mean, there was not like what? Yeah, Nick? I know. Boop, 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 boop,